This is your host Slim bin Muhammad Rafi, and here is your my YouTube channel, <coughs> Zamir Universe. Is history going to repeat itself? I am going to take you back into the pages of history in 1990, and uh, take you. And it's unpleasant, and I will try to be as discreet as I am can and. Here is the historian as I can. The mass graves where the Serbs killed the Bosnian Muslims on the top of the mountain and the mass graves were dug. And you can see the bodies one after the other, 600 and more than 600 bodies of young boys uh, and their fathers, all young men. Um, they were separated from the women, taken up there and shot dead. And the mass graves which they were buried, uh, they tried to hide the evidence, both the Croatian as well as the Serbian president and the Croatian commander of the army. And they did this in the protected area by the United Nations where just like what was happening in Gaza now, where they said it is a protected area and the Dutch soldiers are there to protect you and they hand it over and uh, the cowards this got kept quiet just like the Arabs have done now or Jordanians have done now or Americans have done now that handed over these helpless without any aircrafts the women and children of Gaza and the health care workers in the where most of the dead bodies been found you can see that in Seed and the Shafa hospital compounds and when you see that the patients with medicine and casts and how their hands have been tied and how their hands been cut and their organs removed and how mercilessly they have been shot and executed and uh, you can then understand the cruelty of this nation which you think have the right to exist. A country which does not respect and regard the international, any international law or international norms has no right to exist and I will uh, let you listen to the one of their own ambassadors why the Israel does not deserve to exist. And it's time now, I think 75 years is a long time, unless both Netanyahu and you can see his uh, uh, other war cabinet, uh, you know, one of the extremists and beast and uh, baboon mouth, Ben Gavir, whose car was turned and hopefully he will die there. It's a dog's death. And then you can see the insistence of this, you know, it's, it's, it's an even, I think, an insult for an, any human being to call Netanyahu a human being. And even, even, even as a pet, uh, you cannot call him a dog or you cannot call him a, a swine or, you know, he is a, some other uh, generation of the cruelest, the criminal and uh, the merciless and egocentric, schizophrenic, maniac and he unfortunately is one man against the whole world. He does not listen to the International Court of Justice. Now when the warrants are out and the Israeli or any outside country he is arrested and then put in jail either he will take up the poison and just like the Croatian drink that poison and kill himself just as Hitler did or which very likely he will because he is a mentally abnormal person nobody I think with a normal mind can commit cruelty to women and children who do not carry guns and he has not even killed one Hamas you know, the person who actually he had caged them for 16 years, deprived them of water, electricity, 
any you know material any medicine and you can see that how you can do this even if you have an animal in the house you cannot have and block it uh, you know the and control the food the air the movement as they did to the hamas no gaza strip finance funded by this beast himself so that he can divide and rule the west bank so that the palestinian authority is always kept weakened so that he can divide and rule and now you can see that it is his neck and his turn along with his whole cabinet and even the commanders who ordered the executions and now it's a test for the whole world and the whole humanity that how they are punished you have to give credit to nato and president clinton at the time when in 1990s they bombed and they finished that war in europe after the second world war and arrested serbian president and he had to face he also died in jail and the other guy i will just show you a glimpse that he is drinking poison when he stood in the court when he was sentenced 20 years to die in jail now that's what exactly you can replace them with netanyahu ben giver the defense minister and his whole war council up to the uh, commanders who ordered the execution on the spot in north south gaza or in the hospital ashifa hospital nasir hospital and any other place they did this to the innocent kids and there the unrest in the universities now and all across not only in the united states you know it's gone as far as australia and the whole of europe now this is never going to stop it is also now going to end the israeli lobby in you know, epic now the main r- root cause and all those sending the police of you know americans to go and learn the cruelty to control other human beings in from israel will stop all the congressmen going there and funded by epic will stop all the presidents funded to fight their elections stop i show you a glimpse there where each candidate for presidency says one first day when he becomes president how is he going to Uh, bow his neck and touch and lick the shoes of the israeli or whoever it is so you can see it's like a puppy dog you have a pet just like england or tony blair did with the bush you can see now how your president for the last i think many decades has been doing it to these people you 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 created this monster along with great britain in 1940s and see that monster is now going to bite you back not bite you back but it's been biting you and it's going to eat you and kill you and you are going to have a horrible horrible break of the whole empire and the your present position it's at the end of world war 2 this area was one country the socialist federal republic of yugoslavia it was a union of six different nationalities serbia Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, North Macedonia and Slovenia, all six are independent countries now. But in 1946 they were one. Here in India, we say there is unity in diversity. Not in Yugoslavia though. Their diversity was more aggressive and volatile. Until 1991, this wasn't much of a problem. It was a communist country, so diversity or not, you kept your mouth shut. But in 1991, communism fell across Eastern Europe. Suddenly there was nothing to suppress Yugoslavia's ethnic tensions. So this is what happened. The country split. Bosnia, Croatia, Slovenia and Macedonia left. But Serbia and Montenegro did not. They became the new Yugoslavia. Around this time another internal conflict was brewing. This involved Kosovo. Now Kosovo was a Serbian province. If you ask Serbians, they will say it's the heart of their nationhood. But by the mid 1990s Kosovo had new residents Albanian Muslims and they began asking for independence but Serbia's president would have none of it this man Slobodan Milosevic at first the Kosovan struggle was non-violent but in 1996 the KLA was set up their strategy was quite simple if diplomacy and peace won't work let's fight this out contingent there and what happened to Milosevic 
he had no chance against NATO. So he ended up agreeing to their peace terms. Kosovo remained part of Serbia, but with autonomy. He was toppled by the people next year. He would go on to be charged with war crimes. In 2006, Milosevic was found dead inside his prison cell. And Yugoslavia? That this was the first conflict on the European soil after the World War II. But the truth that the territorial integrity of a country in Europe, Serbia, as a matter of fact, which did not attack any other sovereign country, was violated, is constantly unspoken. The Nasser Medical Facility in Khan Yunis, where bodies remain unclaimed. Evidence of a mass grave has come to light after the Israeli army left the compound. These are not the only victims found in Gaza. At the beginning of April, similar discoveries were made at Al-Shifa Hospital, following an Israeli military operation. Satellite images confirm the existence of two mass graves on these hospital premises. We feel the need to raise the alarm, to raise the alarm because clearly there have been um, multiple bodies discovered. Uh, we don't know how many. There are reports that some of them had their hands tied, which of course indicates um, serious violations of international human, human rights law and international humanitarian law. Women, wounded and older people buried deep and covered in waste are among the victims. As the bodies begin to decompose, there's a pressing call for an investigation. Experts say an independent inquiry needs a neutral party. If you want an independent uh, organization to do it, go to a country if you find one that's willing to go into Gaza that is not engaged in the conflict by the supply of arms or otherwise, and ask them if they will put together a forensic team that will go in and do the job. And I think that happened occasionally in the former Yugoslavia, where you had a great deal of mass grave work that had to be done. Forensic investigations were conducted after mass graves were found in Srebrenica and other towns in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The International Commission on Missing Persons, initiated by former U.S. President Bill Clinton, helped in identifying victims and prosecuting war crimes. With similar investigations underway in Ukraine and Syria after the discovery of mass burial sites, many wonder if the international focus will shift to Gaza. The question is if Israel will allow impartial investigators to enter the Strip, since it already stands accused of genocide at the International Court of Justice. Addressing these mass graves is crucial not only for the families seeking closure, but for the broader goals of finding justice and preventing such acts from happening ever again. Axel Zaymer. We're going to begin in Gaza, where the Palestinian civil defense team says evidence from mass graves in the grounds of Nasser Hospital in Khan Yunus shows the Israeli army carried out summary executions. 392 bodies have been recovered in mass graves across Gaza, but they've not been able to identify 267 of them, and at least 20 people may have been buried alive at the medical complex. Children were also among the bodies recovered. The team is accusing Israel of committing crimes against humanity. Meanwhile, international pressure is mounting on Israel after the discovery of the mass graves. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan says Washington wants answers. The White House says reports of mass graves in Gaza are deeply disturbing. The EU and the United Nations have already called for an independent investigation. Mass graves have been discovered in Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza City, as well as NASA Hospital in the south. Dr. Mohammed al mukhri is head of the Monitoring and Documenting Unit at the Civil Defense Department in Gaza. He's joining us live from Rafa. We're going to be talking to him through a translator. Sir, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Can you tell us how you and your team gathered the evidence? Peace be upon you. Good evening, everyone. During our work with the civil defense team, in order to recover the bodies in the medical complex of Al Nasser, we have found mass graves within the medical complex, and one in the morgue, one in the north of the medical complex, and the civil team, civil defense team has worked in order to recover all the bodies. Most of them were decomposed bodies and the occupation forces has changed the forms and also changed the shrouds and put them in plastic bags. We believe that those bags have accelerated the decomposition of those bodies. We have also noticed through our teams 
we are trying also to document all the evidence that showed that many uh, corpses or bodies uh, have shown signs of torture, including hand cuffing, and also some other parts, uh, some other bodies has shown that they were uh, shot and gun shot. Also, we have observed that there were uh, corpses of uh, bodies that uh, were completely uh, dismembered in we also found uh, bodies of uh, women, young people, elderly in the area of uh, around uh, the medical complex. We also have observed and found uh, some uh, bodies with uh, no clothes. And all this indicated that uh, some other bodies showed that they were uh, being treated in the medical complex as we have shown in the picture during the press conference that showed that one of the uh, bodies that found was uh, receiving treatment. We are uh, trying to uh, find all the evidence, establish all the evidence uh, how those bodies have been buried. We have also noted and observed that many bodies have been have been put in one bag, which is uh, in violation of the uh, regulations we have here. There is also clear indication that some citizens and some bodies have been buried in certain directions. We have also found some bodies in uh, massed and uh, compiled, uh, put uh, 30 meters underground, while in mass graves, the distance should not be more than one meter. So can you tell me what efforts you and your team have made to record and preserve the evidence that you say that you found? We have worked in very difficult conditions and very challenging. This is due to the fact that we are lacking all the needed equipment to deal uh, with those uh, bodies and to uh, maintain them. We have uh, used the equipment that we have in order to recover the bodies, and we have tried as much as possible not to open the bags in order to keep those uh, bodies until they are moved to a clean area where we can clean them and then we can open those bags and uh, document all the evidence that shows that there were signs of uh, torture and are in violation with the uh, international law. After uh, no taking note of all those signs and evidence, we have also been able to identify all the problems shown by those uh, bodies and we have documented them in specialized reports. Some of the reports are likely to help the international uh, committees that can be launched in the near future in order to investigate in those human, uh, in those crimes committed by the occupation. With the evidence that you have managed to pull together, what do you do with it now? How do you get it to an independent team to be able to analyze it? We are ready and fully prepared in order to uh, submit a full report documented with all the photos and evidence that, are, that we have found about those bodies. We can publish them and submit them in both Arabic and in English so that it can be a foundation uh, for the work that can be conducted by international investigation committees. We are here ready in Gaza in order to uh, help their work in order to refrain or to push the occupation to refrain from the crimes being committed against the people in Gaza. Uh, in, during our work, we have found uh, children during the, in those uh, mass graves. What? Why do we have to find um, uh, children bodies in uh, mass graves? Uh, this confirms that the number that we are uh, documenting of uh, children that have died, which is more than 14,000 children, including elderly and women. Are you concerned, sir, that if an independent team is unable to get into Gaza to be able to examine the evidence for themselves, that the evidence might become corrupted, it might become damaged and therefore may become uh, unusable if a case is to be brought? I don't think so, because we have made sure to document all the evidences that we have found so far. 
those uh, bodies have been identified, whether those uh, bodies uh, were unknown or n not known, known or not known. And we are keeping all the uh, evidence that we found in order to uh, present it to the uh, International Investigation Committee. We will exert all effort, our efforts in order to uh, maintain and preserve all the evidence. We will document it properly so that we can convey the message of the Palestinian people to the world. Mm. I want to ask you about the impact that this has been having on you and members of your team having to go through these mass graves and collect the evidence that you have, say you have been able to pull together. What kind of effect is that having on the morale and on the personalities of people? There is an impact, uh, a mental uh, impact, and also a health that is impacting our health and our morale, uh, given that we are exposed directly uh, to those tortures. Some of our uh, team, some members of our team have received the distress calls directly, but we were not able to reach the medical complex on time because of the situation back then we were not able to save lives. Also, uh, some of our uh, teams or our members are still suffering from traumas that is also impacting the quality of the work that we can carry out. As far as their uh, health of our teams are, is concerned, some of our uh, members were uh, contaminated, uh, given that they were dealing directly with those bodies without having the proper precautions due to the lack of equipment. We have also lost all the specialized labs uh, as far as forensic medicine is concerned in Gaza because of the uh, occupation uh, bombings and attacks which has also hindered our work and we were not we were not able to establish all the needed uh, evidence as we hoped so we still believe that the occupation has stolen some organs we have found some bodies with an open stomach and they were just stapled which is also not uh, known as a practice in a forensic medicine or any kind of medicine in the health system in Gaza. We use usually uh, the proper medical equipment and not staple the bodies. Uh, final question, sir. What would you hope that international organizations who look at your evidence would do with it now? We hope to uh, establish the clear evidence that the occupation has committed crimes and killed on purpose uh, thousands of uh, Palestinians in Gaza. They have used all kinds of tortures and violated all the privacy of our people and their dignity. The occupation has committed crimes and has killed all forms of life in Gaza. They took pleasure in doing so and destroying life in Gaza. We hope that there will be a clear report that will emanate from the investigation to prove and establish an evidence of all the occupation crimes being committed in Gaza. Dr. Mohammed al mokhir we appreciate you being with us on Al Jazeera. Thank you very much indeed. I want to bring in Jeffrey Robertson. He's an international lawyer and former United Nations war crimes judge. He was also president of the war crimes court in Sierra Leone. He's joining us live now from London. Good to have you with us on Al Jazeera, sir. This is one of the fundamental problems that uh, Dr. al mokhir was uh, pointing out, isn't it? The difficulty of collecting evidence, tangible evidence, inside a war zone? Well, it's been in a long history. We now have uh, many forensic doctors who have had the rather grisly task of combing through mass graves and examining victims to establish how they died. And that is what is now essential to get to the bottom of this true Atrocity. It's a crime against humanity. And uh, there must be an independent inquiry, although Israel does not accept independence. When seven aid workers were killed by drones the other day, they simply sat the two officials responsible and said it was a tragedy. It wasn't a tragedy. It was a crime. A uh, crime of manslaughter by negligence. Uh, but of course, 
the Israeli government would not allow any prosecution or any independent inquiry. This case cries out for an independent inquiry, and the sooner the better. The Gaza Health Authority is part party. He obviously did yeah. yeah. uh, it, its job. Jeffrey, Rob Jeffrey Robertson, unfortunately, your line there is, is breaking up, and I apologize for interrupting you, but I hope you can uh, still hear me. I do want to ask about one of the points that uh, Dr. Amokaye was making in terms of how they prevent, uh, how they present the evidence uh, to the rest of the world to be investigated, um, that he was suggesting that they would make the evidence available in Arabic and in English. One would imagine that, that the bulk of that may well be online um, until such times as a team can get to see it uh, in person. In terms of bringing a prosecution or making the, the, in terms of the validity of that evidence, would it be enough just to be able to present that evidence online or is it absolutely essential that investigators get to see well, no, that evidence would, in person? It would not be enough because people would say that the Hamas Health Authority was party free. Uh, so you have to have, for the sake of the Israelis as well as the Palestinians, an independent inquiry. And the real question of getting a team of experienced forensic uh, doctors and uh, a prosecutor or judge uh, with an international reputation uh, in to Gaza, I mean the <laughs> Karim Khan, the head of the International Criminal Court prosecution was not allowed into Gaza. So I think this is the point at which America has to step up. It's got uh, a number of eminent prosecutors and experts. I'm sure it can put a team together and it will have to insist because this has caused outrage in the international community, it will have to insist on a truly independent investigation, independent of both the Hamas authorities and the Israeli government. It will have to have the ability to question those uh, Israeli officers in the vicinity to establish how this horror came about and who is responsible. Mm. That is only the questions being asked by the European Union, by governments around the world, can only be answered by uh, an inquiry which is independent of both sides. Mm. But because this is a crime against humanity, uh, it requires uh, a full and independent and transparent investigation. Jeffrey Robertson, uh, international lawyer, former United Nations war crimes judge. So we appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed.
India for news breaks, analysis, interviews and events. We bring you stories from your neighborhood and from across the globe as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the like button and press the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like our videos and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest. It was meant to be a straightforward appeals judgment, but the UN War Crimes Court quickly turned to chaos, seconds after the judges upheld Bosnian Croat military leader Slobodan Prijak's 20-year sentence. Stop, please. Please sit down. Monsieur le Président, notre, notre client dit qu'il a, qu a bu un poison ce matin. Proceedings were halted and the curtains brought down, leaving the courtroom in a state of confusion. Several emergency workers rushed into the building carrying equipment in backpacks, and an ambulance was later seen leaving the tribunal. His death was announced by Croatian State TV shortly after. Prijak was the former commander of the Bosnian Croat Defence Forces, imprisoned for crimes against humanity. He was one of six former Bosnian Croat political leaders appearing in court on Wednesday, including Dejanko Prilic, former Prime Minister of the Bosnian Croats' breakaway statelet. This is the final case at the groundbreaking UN tribunal before it closes its doors at the end of next month. It was set up in 1993 for war crimes committed during the bloody 1990s breakup of former Yugoslavia. Wednesday's verdict came a week after the judges sentenced former Bosnian Serb military commander Ratko Mladic, dubbed the Butcher of Bosnia, 
to life imprisonment after finding him guilty of genocide and war crimes. Universal Television ko subscribe karna na bhole. Uske baad bell button pe click kare aur apne comments ke section mein apne kingti jo khayalat ka izhar zaroor.